Wikipedia, and uh, I'm mostly known in Pakistan as FK, which is a synonym for what I want to say to my politicians. Okay, so let me tell you about new media in Pakistan and how it's empowered us over the years. It basically all started out in, say, about 2008, when the blogosphere was very new in Pakistan, and most of us were regarded as people who just had a lot of free time and didn't know what to do with it, so we blogged. And uh, pretty soon, um, mainstream media started to pick up on our writings and decided that, oh, here there are some people who have a voice which is kind of different. So let's feature them and try to make some money off them. So um, most of us uh, are now column writers in many of the major newspapers in Pakistan. And this is how it all started out. And Twitter started growing, and Facebook really opened up doors for us in Pakistan. Uh, let me give you some numbers. There are about 6 million of us on Facebook. There were three million of us on Twitter. And uh, when all this had started and we had sort of gained ground and gained a voice, the floods happened in 2010. Now, um, in the floods, uh, in the start, we knew that our government was pretty much going to be slow in reacting. So a few of us, uh, there is just four of us, me, uh, Dr. Oab Alvi, the two guys in California, Sabat Ashraf and uh, A.R. Rafiq, we decided to do something about it. Now, we didn't have any resources on ground. We didn't have anywhere to go for donations. We didn't know what to do, basically, because we had never done any relief work. So what we did is we decided to use our social media tools to sort of reach out to the community and raise money and take the stuff ourselves into the interior of Pakistan, in, mostly in the same region, and try to help out people. Um, I'm going to... I don't know if I'll have all the facts and figures with me right now, but in total we raised about $256,000 online in the space of about four months. And we did that by setting up a portal called essayrelate.com. And now it's turned into basically an umbrella organization for anybody that needs online help in any kind of relief efforts. But what we did was we... Um, the basic problem in Pakistan, as far as NGOs and stuff that are people that are wanting to ask for donations, is accountability. So what we did is we dropped, on our website, we had uh, technology help us in dropping GPS markers on, on our, all our routes into the interior via our phones. And we used to use Twitter to treat live pictures and upload videos and podcasts on what's going on on the ground. And we had some areas that none of the aid agencies reached for like days and weeks. So let me just give you some of the facts from the first seven missions. Uh, this is when we had raised about $142,000. And with that, we provided um, 36,800 people with food hampers, each hamper containing basic food for a family of five per week. We provided 25,000 people with ready to eat meals. We provided 280 tents in various locations in Sakkar, Chicago, and Tata. Uh, which can shelter about 280 families of, or it's say 10 to a 10, 2,800 people. We provided 500 families with clothes. We provided six trucks of water bottles, approximately 1,000 cases of 1.5 liter bottles each. So this is just in the first seven missions. Um, and we could not have done this through so, without social media because it was so fascinating. We, because we didn't have any of the resources that NGOs and eight own missions have on ground. So we would be rolling into a town with a convoy of trucks and we would tweet that we are coming there and somebody would tweet back, okay, do you need a warehouse to keep your goods? Do you need a place to stay for the night? So this is how it all happened. It all happened through social media. Okay, so in going on, uh, so next year, because our government doesn't believe in a drainage system, in 2011, we had a flood hit us again in Badin, okay? And at this time, a lot of aid organizations basically exhausted their donations, you know, and a lot of people were not ready to donate anymore because they were just tired of it. And obviously, we are an economically poor nation. But through social media, we were able to raise $90,000 in a month again and go out there and feed about 2,000 people a day ready to eat hot meals that we cooked on ground for two months. We also had four medical camps. This was 2011. Coming on to 2012, um, since now everybody has sort of woken up to what we could do with social media, and everybody had realized how much of a voice we had, we started to basically make our influence known on our broadcast or mainstream media of our country. 
There was a show in Pakistan, uh, a morning show called the Maya Khan Show. I don't know if you've heard about this. Many Pakistanis would know. She basically took a camera crew into parks in Pakistan and started intruding in the lives of couples who were just, you know, hanging out, you know, romanticizing with each other, or whatever. She would just smile in their faces and ask them, you know, do your families know what you're doing, and stuff like that. So. An online campaign started against this uh, on social media, and we got enough signatures on an online petition to get her dismissed and shut that show down. So that was basically when mainstream media realized that, okay, these guys just don't have a voice, they can get us fired. <laughs> okay, so um, going on right now, what's happening in Pakistan to the current movement that's happening is basically what Ethan talked about, the freedom of speech on the internet. In March this year, our government decided to use the R&D fund for telcos, which is uh, basically a fund which is used for research and development of the communications technology in Pakistan. And they floated a tender advertising that they wanted to buy $10 million worth of equipment to create the Great Firewall of Pakistan. Now, um, because some of us, like uh, Sana Salim, who's present here, and she's head of Bolo B, an advocacy group for the internet, some of us have an international voice more than others. So she used her voice to project what's exactly going on. And some of us also helped in that with our writings. And an online campaign started for the freedom of internet in Pakistan. What happened after was that we could create enough pressure internationally through news reports and some of our friends who are just to um, get the technology providers, the companies, that would bid for this proposal to back off, saying that we would not participate in restriction of freedom of speech in, the, in Pakistan. So the government had to back off on that for a little bit. But now we realized a month ago that this is not going to fly for too long because, you know, an oppressor suddenly feels the need to oppress once in a while. So we, <laughs> so, um, we decided to go to court few of us against the government of Pakistan, and uh, thankfully we've uh, gotten a stay order from a judiciary, which is probably the first stay order for its kind in our country, and it says that now the PTA, which is the governing body for restricting uh, websites and banning websites in Pakistan, cannot do it without going through the judicial process. They have to follow their own charter of rules, but they have to give a system that can allow the person whose site is going to be banned a chance to redress, a chance to address them and tell them that, you know, okay, this is what I was doing and this is not. Because I'll give you a small example. Um, a few days ago, a website called hometownshoes.com was banned in Pakistan. Now that guy just creates shoes at home and sells them online. So, and when we approached the, uh, the PTA uh, uh, through PASHA, which is an association of software bodies in Pakistan, um, we found out that for a period of 18 days, everything with the name shoe in their domain was banned in Pakistan. So that happens a lot, mistakes are made. But hopefully, now with uh, the support of this community and with all our friends around the world, we can be trying to fight this fight for uh, freedom of speech and internet. And this stay order, we're hoping that we can carry it on through the legal means to address this issue and fight for a basic right for Pakistanis to address the internet as they and engage in and access the internet as they want. So in the end, in closing, I'd like to say a big thank you from Pakistan, from GB Pakistan, and we're proud to be part of this community. Thank you.